Hey everyone, welcome to my first Painting with Jay vlog. Um, I decided to start a painting vlog because, you know what, I have way too many unpainted models and I have got to take care of that. So uh, I decided to just start challenging myself and, uh, and painting, building my guys, getting my armies done, plus that way I get more, um, I get more models for uh, my battle reports because people keep saying on the comments, I know it's a frequently commented comment, that uh, I don't, I, that I don't mix up my lists enough, you know, that I just play the same list all the time. So I've decided that I, it's a good time now to, uh, to just start building my models again, you know, and that way I can uh, make different lists and everything. So these, just to let you know, these vlogs are going to be pretty loose, just, you know, uh, I'm just going to talk while working, answer questions in the future, so feel free to leave questions in the comments down below. And right now, so let me tell you guys what I'm doing right now, so I have, um, People don't know this, but actually, I have five sets of the Dark Vengeance, of the Dark Angels half of, of Dark Vengeance. Five total, and I've only built about three and three of them. So uh, that's why I run primarily Deathwing, and all my Deathwing look the same. I got three of the, uh, three of the sets, and, or sorry, five of the sets, and now I'm just going to finish building them. And that's why I'm going to build, so that way I'll have 15 bikes total, and uh, 50 Tactical Marines, 25 Deathwing. That's is that's a pretty good size army for Dark Angels to begin with. And then what I've done is I've picked up a couple other models. Uh, for example, I've recently got Belial. Not Belial. I already have Belial. Azrael. Yep, Azrael. He's still in metal. That's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, it'll be fun. That's what I'm, I'm looking forward to. It's going to be fun. So another HQ, tons of models, and yeah, let's begin then. It's just going to be... So this one will be me assembling. Um, as I said, this one will be just putting together models for the next, I don't know, so-and-so minutes, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. Uh, I just like to... Yeah, just keep talking. But it's going to be fun. I really... I really do want to build some variation in my list for Dark Angels, so some more Tactical Marines, Never Hurts, and more Terminators, of course I already run Deathwing all the time with Belial, so now I can run them with Azrael, the real Azrael, not just a, uh, a stand-in, that'd be good, and it'll be nice, and that way I also I get more models of mine painted, so that it just takes a load off your mind. You know, I have, I have a lot of unpainted models in my house. I have about five, four or five hundred, I'd, I'd estimate, probably, unpainted models, maybe five hundred. So that's a lot. And so then each month I'm going to set myself some realistic goals and I'm going to try to obtain them. And this, for the next few weeks, I'm going to be building up Dark Angels. And then I think after that I'm going to go with my War Machine, and specifically my Signar, and that way I can get my Signar done, which would be nice, because then I can make a lot more War Machine battle reports. Right now I have about 50 points, mm, about 50 points painted up for Signar. Most of them Jacks, because I really love the Jacks. The War Jacks is what actually got me into War Machine. Of course, since getting to War Machine, I've pretty much realized that all the competitive lists don't involve many jacks at all. It, they're hordes and hordes and hordes of uh, units, which is ironic. So War Machine is really good at running hordes of guys, and if you look at the, com the competitive hordes lists, they run a lot of big, heavy war beasts. So it's kind of the opposite of, uh, of what you'd normally expect based on their names. So, that's kind of funny. Well, because for hordes, you need to actually have a lot of jacks, because they're the ones that, or sorry, not jacks, war beasts, because they're the ones that produce the fury that uh, you need to cast your spells. That's nice. 
So there's one, there's one. Yeah, so after this I'll have tons and tons of models for my uh, Dark Angels, which is nice. I know the Space Marines Codex just came out. I did my review of it. And it was fun. It's an interesting looking codex. Most of the points are very much identical to Dark Angels. So Dark Angels seem to kind of be the feeler of the, of the codex. And so they're pretty much appropriately costed. Um, a couple things. Owen and I have been trying out various combinations for Space Marine Week coming up for Mini Wargaming. And we did find that the Grav Weapons are really good on bikes, obviously, because bikes have Relentless, and thus can uh, fire salvo weapons after moving full speed. So what they do is, especially if you're on White Scars, Owen loves White Scars, and White Scars, if you take Con, you uh, give him Scout. So that's pretty nasty, so you can scout your bikes across, so let's say you go first, you can scout your bikes halfway across the table, and then during your first turn, you can <coughs> finish the distance, which is nasty. And then destroy your opponent. Because you can pretty much wipe out a good chunk of their army, especially with the grav guns if they have any monstrous creatures. But as I said, grav guns are very gimmicky. Um, this is a situation where we found yet yeah, they will really work together. Uh, as long as, because they're salvo, you half the distance if you move, but bikes ignore that, so it's a great, it's a great uh, way to fix that problem with the, uh, the salvo weapons. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the questions, that's a left arm, that's a right arm. So one of the questions that I got in my Q and J's. Hey Rubik. Rubik might appear and disappear, and so might Mandy during my my live shows or my uh, vlogs. So one of the questions I got during my Q and J was just to talk about my history with 40k and, and miniature wargaming, which I will gladly do because. Uh, Obviously, I, I really love uh, miniature wargaming because I make a, a life out of it. So, yeah, I might as well discuss that today. I figure that'll be a good topic for today. It's just an introduction. That way you guys get to know me a little bit better. And, yeah, you know, it's, it's awesome. The more you guys get to know me, the better relationship I guess we can have. You know, it's, it's cool. So, basically, my... History with 40k or 40k war, uh, miniature wargaming in general is is 40k is my history. Uh, I got into 40k many many years ago during second edition, back when uh, orcs were really really random, fun but really really random, and. They were. Yeah, I got into orcs. Um, it was when I was a kid. My friend uh, just showed me Warhammer 40k. He played Space Marines, uh, Ultramarines to be specific, and he showed me orcs. And I thought orcs were just awesome. You know, they had a great uh, character to them, and I liked painting the miniatures. I wasn't very good. You know, that's what it shows. You guys keep uh, keep practicing because when I was a kid, I was not very good at all. Now I'm pretty good. I consider myself above average. Not the, the best, but definitely, I'd say, I'm okay. And, yeah, so I played for a while. It was fun playing orcs, but orcs back in 2nd edition weren't the most competitive, because what they tend to do is get mowed down really quickly, so you just put all your models on the table at the beginning, and then have uh, a good chunk of them removed before your basically your turn. If your opponent went first, it would just be a wipeout, you know, back then. But they looked really cool. The orcs had a lot more character back then. Each clan had its own little look. And different looking guys, and they were metal models. It was interesting. 
Uh, I still have some, but I just can't grab them right now. But uh, yeah, they were cool. Cool army. And I played it for several years. I played 40k for, I don't know, three or four years. It was just the beginning of 2nd edition. Just after 2nd edition came out. And, and then, um, just, I guess just before, just after 3rd edition, I remember it was around the time of Gorka Morka, that I just, I got a little tired of it. I was a kid, and I just wanted to spend money elsewhere. You know, some kids get tired of the game. And I stopped playing. Uh, I didn't really regret it. I just, it was a part of my life. And then I, I just stopped playing. I kept the miniatures. I didn't ever sell them off. But, uh, yeah, I just stopped for a while. I guess a lot, as a lot of the kids do when they become teenagers and stuff. Tensions go elsewhere. And that was it for a while. And here's the next sheet. So I might as well build these guys while I'm going, and then I'll move on to the next set. Right now, yeah, this is just one of the sets that I've guess I've, I've taken all the tactical marines from. And yeah, so I just have the bikes and then a couple of HQs. In the end, I'm gonna have a lot of chapter masters and a lot of librarians. I should probably convert one to maybe like Tigurius or something. One of the cool character guys, perhaps. But it's all good. I have Azrael now, so I eventually should get Samuel because uh, Samuel makes bike scoring as well. I do have Azrael, but the problem is with Azrael is you can't give him a bike, so you can just. Uh, you can stick him with the Terminator squad, for example, and he should be, he'll be good. But uh, obviously, if you, let me just start checking. So, you know, you have Samuel, give him the the, the Raven Wing, and uh, it'd be pretty cool. I do see people, a lot of people running Raven Wing right now. I don't think it's the most competitive. It is cool. You know, they are they're cool and they're fast hitting. But uh, depending on which army you're against, because essentially Ravenwing are just very, very quick space marines. They do get a few advantages. They get a Jinx save, for example, which is kind of like an invul. But you have to move uh, for the, the Jinx to work. So for the Jinx ultimately to be effective, you have to move first. So you have to go first, because otherwise if your opponent gets to go first... I really love the way these just snap together. Um, if your opponent goes first, you don't get a jinx save, because you're, you haven't moved. And, yeah, so it heavy, it, there's a heavy reliance on going first. Not this one, this one. Start cleaning out the. As I said, there might be some. I'll try to keep talking. Obviously, I'm just gonna, you know, just gotta get some stuff done at the same time. Let's see if that fixed it. Nope. Do I have a pin? I'm a little bit unorganized at the moment. I will admit that. But I'm usually unorganized anyway. Oh, they're there. Pins. I'll just move that for quickly. And grab this. Yeah, as I said, it's just going to be a, a, like, a, not necessarily low energy or something, but it's just going to be you know, me assembling stuff. So feel free. What I say is to just, you know, give yourself a challenge and paint along and build along with me. That's what I would I would love, you know, just to, for each of my, the viewers, to just see how much, uh, you can get done over a period of time, you know? The thing is about miniature wargaming is that painting takes up a lot of time, depending on the level you want to paint it. And a lot of people can get frustrated very quickly with the amount of time and dedication it takes to paint. Which was cool for me because I was a commissioned painter for a while. And I'll talk about that in a future video of why I stopped for temporarily. And what I'm doing now, 
But uh, I love to paint. That's the thing. I really do love it. I have always enjoyed it. I wasn't very good, as I said, with a kid, but with practice. You know, you learn techniques. You build upon your skills a little bit at a time. And before you know it, you're kicking butt. And I remember the time I won... I've won Best Painted a couple twice at a couple small tournaments, but that winning Best Painted just felt amazing, you know, because it's, it just, it, people really appreciated the amount of time I put into a model and, and my, my work. And I'm not calling myself an artist or anything. I don't really consider myself an artist. I just, uh, I paint. I love painting. I'm not the most artistic individual. I'm more of a mathematician at heart, but uh, yeah, so that's that's my stuff. Sorry, so back to where I was. I'm gonna. You'll notice that in these these speeches, I'm gonna probably. Um, I don't know how that this goes. This yes, like that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get off topic a bit because I'm Jay, and I'm really absent-minded sometimes, which is funny because I have to keep so busy. I'm not ADD or ADHD or anything, I just, um, my life is very busy, and I keep busy, and people wonder about that because my, I, I mentioned to one of my Q&Js that I have another job, which is true, I do have another job. Um, I have two jobs, actually, well, technically, three jobs. Yeah, I work too much, but uh, that's what you kind of have to do. My wife is a student, and I love her very much, and for us to get by, you know, if, if for me to continue to be a miniature war gamer as a job, uh, I don't make the money that I need to keep going as a, as a miniature war gamer. So the only way to solve that problem is to have another job, and between my two jobs, we get by. We're not in good, you know, in the good books yet, but uh, one day she'll not be a student, and we'll both have incomes, and it'll be really sweet, you know? And I don't really question how much I have to work. I don't really do that. Um, I'm really good at turning off my brain in that respect, because I... You just kind of, I was always taught when I was a kid that when you need to do something, you do it, you know? And that's what I do. I, I work. And I don't really question the amount I work because if I need to work two, three jobs every day of the week, I, there most weeks I work seven days a week. Some weeks I get a day off. Uh, today I'm filming this, but I'm going to go to my other job in a couple hours for most of the night, and uh, that's it, you know, I, oh, here we go, look at this, one raven wing done, nice, I apologize if there's any background noise, I don't have a microphone on or anything, but uh, yeah, and that's what you do, you know, so uh, that's my work, I'll talk more about that in future videos, but it's okay, I'm not preaching or anything, I'm, I'm just, let's go back to me and Ninja War Game, so I got out of it, um, for a while, for several years, I did paint models still. I made models, uh, like model cars, model trains. Uh, I don't think I mean planes. I think it was just cars, trucks, everything like that. And and then five, five years ago, just after 5th edition came out, so just after Ultramarines, the last actually art, uh, Space Marine Codex. Yeah. You know, Vanilla Space Marine Codex, obviously. Um, what I mentioned when that came out, uh, I, my wife, who at the time was my, my girlfriend, her friend, named Jill, had a boyfriend at the time, and now they're married, too, and, and everything, uh, named Andy, which you guys might know as, as Squalish, or it, it's my friend Andy, who I've been playing battle reports with. He, it's, it, it's usually his Eldar, or occasionally Chaos Space Marines, versus, you know, whatever army I'm playing. But, uh, my friend Andy, who I, who's been in a bunch of battle reports, in fact, he's in my, my War Machine battle report that I put up on my channel, and I keep dropping this guy. 
Uh, and he got me right back into miniature wargaming. He invited me along. He's, he heard that uh, through the... No, sorry, no, he didn't hear. He was talking one day in front of us about what he does for fun. And he mentioned miniature wargaming, specifically Warhammer 40k. And I was said, oh, that's cool. I used to play that, you know, years ago as a kid, but it was really chaotic back then. Like, there were a lot of weird rules and stuff. And he said, oh, well, no, it's been, it's been very streamlined as of recently. And a new edition just came out. I'm relearning it with my friends. Uh, their names are Rob and John, as well as friend and his brother, Rob and John. And uh, would you like to come out and, you know, play with us? We'd love a fourth person. Uh, and we'll teach you back the rules. We're relearning the rules ourselves because a new edition just came out. And I thought, hmm, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, I, I wasn't obsessed as I was now with uh, miniature wargaming back then, but I was starting my master's in university, and I thought, well, do I need another distraction in my life? You know, I uh, do I need another thing that might take up my time instead of my science? But then I thought, well, I need a hobby, right? You can't only do work all the time. Uh, so I thought. And uh, so I thought, you know what? Let's do it. And I, I, my wife, the, ironically, my wife was the one, Brooke, she was the one who pushed me into it. She was my, uh, she was what, you know, kept me uh, into wargaming. She said, you know what, you need a hobby, you should go make some friends. At the time, I, don't, I didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, I still don't, but I didn't back then, too. And... Maybe it's that way. Sorry, I'm just fixing a miniature. Let's see if this is the way. But um, she said, I need to make some friends, so I should go and relearn Warhammer 40k. And that's the history, basically. It's insane. And then I started playing. Uh, back when I used to play, as I used to play Orcs, but I really loved Tyranids. And so when I got back into it, Tyranids were just about to get a new codex. Like, that was the rumors. And so I waited intentionally. I played, I did play a, a few, you know, I played several games under the old Nids, which were themed Nidzilla, because back then you could run six Carnifexes, uh, half of them as troops, and half of them as, uh, sorry, not troops, half of them as heavy, half of them as elite. But, um, and then when the new Codex came out, obviously that changed drastically. You could run more Carnifexes, but just people stopped running Carnifexes because they got nerfed into the ground. Yeah. So, then I started with uh, Tyranids back. I really, Tyranids always interested me. And then I figured if I was going to go to a second army, I'd go back to Orcs. And most people don't know that about me. I'm actually a Tyranid and Orc player at heart. I have tons of Tyranids, tons of Orcs. Obviously, I play Orcs, because you guys know that too. You see a lot of Orcs. But most people don't know, because I use most of Matt's models, that uh, I actually have a lot of Tyranids. And I play Tyranids all the time. I love Tyranids. They're my, my first army. And I still love to play them in 6th edition, because they got awesome. And within months, I had a few thousand points. Uh, within a year, I had about almost 10,000 points, and the addiction started, and it would never stopped. It never stopped. But it was fun, and I love it to this day, you know. Um, it's always funny. People ask me, how did I get back in? My wife. And that's how awesome she is. Um, and so in the end, you know, it, it's things like that, that remind you how awesome, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of people's wives, not everyone's obviously, but I know people's wives who don't like their miniature war game. But mine got me into it. And that's one of the reasons that when I, when I work every day, I don't mind. I really don't. Because it's for my family. It's for my wife that she loves me enough that she has survived my addiction and, uh, to this day, she still supports it, you know? And then, uh, what else? I continued to do grad school 
for years and I finished my masters. Uh, after my masters I kept you know making videos and stuff but it was actually then when uh, I think it was yeah it was after I during my PhD I started making videos yeah it was during my PhD and then after my masters I decided to keep going to do my PhD because I really wanted to be a professor and continue in science little did I know what was in store for me um, my wife got into vet school so she's going to be a vet and that's really cool she's always wanted to be a vet and she's gonna be an awesome vet and yeah we, we kept going and I started making videos which I'll, I'll go into more details in the future about that but what happened was I wasn't a bad painter as I said I, I started getting a little recognition in this area as for my painting skills and my friends were saying that at the time there weren't a lot of painting tutorials for their armies now if you played Space Marines there were tons of painting tutorials and they mentioned uh, a guy whose name was Lester Bursley I believe awesome paint job and they said this guy is really good and he makes great Space Marine videos what if you don't paint Space Marines you know what if you don't have Space Marines there's not a lot of tutorials out there and so I started making videos just with my you know my wife's camera that I recently had gotten her for a gift uh, a DSLR and I started making videos like that and then slowly after that I started making I wanted to get uh, well not slowly, I guess it was a little while now you know my goal was to get uh, partnership eventually that was kinda cool I thought it was kinda cool if I could make you know it wasn't a get rich quick scheme by any means or you know I was I wasn't gonna get rich off my hobby or anything but I thought it'd be kinda cool to make a little money while um, while making my tutorials because then if people liked them. Oh, that's the reason. So if people liked the, uh, I made a mistake and I'm going to fix it. So if, if people liked my videos, I thought that'd be kind of cool that I could make a little bit of, of money because then I could use the money to buy more models. And it would be a nice positive feedback loop, as you'd say in science. Um, you know, I was never about to get rich, and it just, it was kind of cool, because back when I got into to Warhammer 40k back in, in second edition, there wasn't this online presence that there is now, obviously, and people, you know, there wasn't this, this community that all of a sudden exists here. You didn't know where the, you know, the nearest tournament was unless you really looked hard. Darn, that was actually correct. I thought I made a mistake. Turns out I was right. Yep, I was right. Um, here I'm using plastic glue so I can melt the pieces together. I love plastic glue. Uh, it's also a good way to forget what you're talking about because of the fumes. No, I'm just kidding. And so I just kept making videos. A little bit at a time, making videos for myself, having fun. And then one day, and this was actually at the time where I was debating really heavily of uh, leaving my, my PhD, um, I got this email from a guy who I was very much familiar with because I, you know, getting into miniature, uh, miniature wargaming videos, you pretty much quickly hear about mini wargaming. They're kind of the, you know, they are the leading video makers in our niche and all of a sudden I get this email from Mini Wargamer Dave saying hey Jay I really like your videos a lot how would you like to make videos for us and that was amazing I was like what I, you know it, it's really cool when people that you're subscribed to um, and have been watching since, you know, early, early, early days, start giving you recognition, that was just like, wow, that's really cool. You can see how quick I am at building these models, and this entire time I've built uh, three Ravenwing. 
that's okay. As long as I'm getting work done, I'm talking to you guys, that's what matters. And as I said, this is just meant to be like some background. You, you could put it in the background of your, of your work, you know, and just work to it. And I don't know, I've heard that my voice can lull people to sleep. And so I went and worked with, uh, I left school, you know, uh, it was a long, tough decision, but I decided to eventually leave school. I wasn't happy. And in the end, happiness matters. And uh, it wasn't because of the money, because I make a lot more now working two jobs. Even if I was working minimum wage, I'd still be making a lot more than as a grad student. Grad students make nothing. So, I, I'm happy, you know, and that's what matters. Um, so I went to work for Mini Warming, and I loved it. I made painting tutorials for the vault, primarily, and for a couple, um, and some free ones. I, I, it was mostly the Dark Angels, actually, which was funny, because I'm same models I'm building as we speak. I made some vault tutorials for orcs and for dark angels. A couple of things. I think my addition one was a gray knight. Yeah, it was a gray knight um, purifier. And I loved it. I, you know, I made money via miniature war game painting. It was really cool. Uh, I did get, I was a partner on YouTube after about a year as well, but you know, it was cool making a living. And then uh, I, I stopped working for Mini Wargaming. Uh, they laid me off temporarily. They did tell me that there was always the chance that they could bring me back. And that's when I went and got my other job, which I'm still there. And I'm happy there as well. And I worked two jobs. That's cool too. And then after Dan decided that he was leaving, which was a huge shocker, because uh, I did record a few, like I made a few battle reports when I was there uh, doing painting as well. Because I'm, I'm still a player and I have, you know, a fun personality, people say. And I have a lot of fun. I love playing the game. I love painting and I love doing both. And so then when Dan decided he was going to leave, uh, Dave thought of me and said, Hey Jay, would you like to come back to... Uh, to Mini Wargaming, this time exclusively making uh, battle reports instead of painting. And I thought that was awesome because now I can paint for this channel, you know, and paint miniatures up and do focus on the painting for my YouTube channel. And then I just get to go to work and play games all day and then edit battle reports. That's pretty cool. You know, and to this day, so I've been doing it now since April. So it's been about five months. Yeah, five months. And to this day, I'm I'm as happy as ever. I love my job, you know, and I love miniature wargaming. And the thing is, when I go home, I still think of miniature wargaming. It hasn't killed the hobby at all for me. Ooh, another guy down. And I love it just as much today, if not way more, than I did a while ago, you know, I, I, the more I get into it, the, the more I, I love it. And that's why I love it so much. It's just a fun, fun thing. And now my job is to, is to interact with people and I get to meet other war gamers and have play games with them and have a good time. You know, I'm not a very competitive person, which you can definitely see in my battle reports. Uh, I play quasi competitive lists, I think because my playing style is so light that it makes the games more balanced if I, you know, if I end up playing a relatively not, I don't play super competitive or anything, but I, I play Deathwing because I love, De I love just Deathwing. They're just cool. I love Terminators. I'm making Terminators scoring, it's only exclusive to Grey Knights or, um, Grey Knights or Dark, Dark Angels. So, yeah, I'm happy, you know, and I've been, I'm, I know I work a lot, and I can be stressed sometimes financially, but who isn't, you know? Um, but I'm happy, and that's what my life is about right now. Um, it's about balance, you know, I've learned that a lot lately. Life is about balance. Uh, but 
I love my job. There are some people, out, I don't make a lot of money, but there are a lot of people out there who, who don't love their jobs as much as I love my job, you know, and, you know, I can't complain. You guys, and I, I, I love the fans, you know, my work is, is, I try to make as much about the fans as about me. Um, I used to do a live show, which I mentioned in one of my Q&Js, and I loved it. It was so much fun. So much fun. Um, but unfortunately, it had to come to an end because of uh, time constraints and because uh, life has a funny way of working out. My computer won't open, like I, none of my computers will, will be able to open up the, uh, the software needed to, to broadcast. So maybe one day I'll have the money to uh, get a new computer. Or a decent one, I guess. And yeah, and I'd love to do it again because I love to interact with my my viewers. You know, it's cool. Like it, uh, it blew my brain the first time I went into a shop. Now um, I'll talk about this later in the future, but future videos. I don't live actually near Mini Wargaming. That's the other thing. I commute a lot. Um, but it, the first time I walked into a store. And had someone just like, hey, Jay, how's it going, dude? And I was like, what? I kind of forgot for a second. How do you know my name? You know, I don't know you. Don't talk to me like you know me. No, I'm kidding. Um, and it was just, it was so awesome, you know, that that I've gotten, I get to interact with people. And, and you know, and I if I cheer people up, occasionally I get these awesome emails about how I've affected people, just cheered them up in times, you know, talking about stuff, tips. It, it really makes things worthwhile. It really does. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, what I'm about. That's my history with 40K. So right now, I have uh, a lot of armies. I play four armies that I have, well, technically five. I do have Necrons. I don't play Necrons very often, because my Necrons are here in Guelph, not uh, at work. But I do play Tyranids, Orcs, oh, another guy. So there's one set of Dark Vengeance. So far, this entire 40-minute video, I have assembled Three dark, sorry, three raven wing, and one more. Excuse me, one more grandmaster and one librarian. So it's been an interesting time. But I'm talking to you guys, and I'm having a good time doing it. Now I have another set to do. So yeah, maybe I'll probably call it now because I'm about 37 minutes in, 38 minutes. But I really enjoyed this vlog, and now you see what I'm working on. So definitely expect more dark angels in future. Uh, vlogs and more battle reports. I'm gonna get some Ravenwing going. Uh, 15 bikes flying down the field. It'll be pretty fun. I really think so. So thank you very much for watching this vlog. As I said, it's just me rambling for about 40 minutes. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want any, if you have any other questions for me that you think would be a great topic for this vlog, leave comments in the comment section down below. I'd love to talk about them and address them. And for you guys, just get to know me. Me get to know you guys. And that's what men, or guys. People, obviously. Um, it's not all men. In fact, I would love to talk one day about the women in wargaming. And uh, that's an interesting topic. Which my answer will be interesting, I think. But I, I tend to think things from interesting angles, but that's all good. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Please like the video, comment in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more of them, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. It really does help a lot. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.